One week ago, we were faced uh, with the unfortunate events of uh, Brian Shearer's passing away. A lot of people have also passed away during the same period, but I'm here to talk about what happened, you know, afterwards and the effect and the growth that we are seeing as regards to social media, as regards to us as Kenyans, interpersonal relationship redefined by moments like this. First and foremost is people have to train themselves to speak life. Whatever weaknesses that uh, Brian Chira had, be it human flaws, nobody is perfect. He was just trying to survive in a hostile environment, hostile climate, hostile for young people. You cannot make it in this country when you're young, not unless you're connected, not unless you're doing some crazy things just to stay relevant, just to get jobs, just to get tenders. Those who choose a separate path are punished, but it was becoming more and more apparent that uh, his death had been foreseen, had been prophesied by many. And so there's a song by Damien Mali that says, speak life, speak life, uh, speak life to anyone who is struggling, speak life, because all of us are from different circumstances and not every one of us can have a nine to five job. You can be doing God knows what. That is a privilege that used to happen uh, in the 70s and 80s, but now people have to survive. And so it's your work to just push them on, especially if you're privileged. It's not your work to keep on lecturing people as if you're their mother, telling them how they are doing badly or what. No, that's not your work. The people have to grow up sometimes. You have to know that your tongue is very powerful. You cannot be going to tell people that hey, you're going to die. You're going to die. He, when uh, now that he died, are you happy? Uh, do you feel vindicated? Uh, I was right. No, those are not uh, the opportunities for now to show that you are right. No, that was pathetic of you. Some of you have to grow up. Some of you are old. You cannot be just preaching death to people just because they chose a path that is not agreeable to you, that is not convenient for you, that is not pliable in the eyes of the masses because everyone here we've been planned for, that you finish high school, you go to college, you do X, Y, and Z, yeah? Speaking of college, he was in Kabarak University. When uh, he had been arrested for defaming Aziad, uh, the school then went ahead to expel him. The school is owned by who? It's owned by Daniel Arap Moy. Uh, who, his son Gideon Moore is the one who took over as a chancellor. A school built by proceeds of crime, expelling a student just because them, they have a motto that professes biblical perspectives. And a, a school built with proceeds of crime, built with unscrupulous uh, sources of money, purports to uphold biblical perspectives. I mean, this is the rubbish that we have to tolerate in this country, the hypocrisy, the double standards. People who are who, who have been charged with corruption are now preaching to us about biblical perspectives. That was pathetic of you, Gideon Moy, uh, for 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 jumping onto a story just because it was trending, just because uh, you thought that this student did not did not fit a profile that you wanted for your students. That is pathetic. I know it is because of now being isolated from his friends, his classmates, that now he started being dogged with depression. Whatever you people say that his life was, I don't know on what trajectory, you, you're no better or different. And so now I was also trying to, you know, on, on the same day that the TikTokers were going to bury uh, Brian Shira. There was also a concurrent funeral uh, by Pastor JJ Yetahi, his mom. He had lost his mom during the same uh, period. Rest in peace to her. But then there is where the government machinery had uh, pitched camp. That's where Deputy President Rigavi Gashagwa was going and Moses Kuria. And so you could see that long has. They had hoped that they are going to cash in. They are going to exploit the, the funeral for personal uh, political uh, points. But it didn't happen because all the attention went to Brian Shiraz, even though the mainstream media themselves were camped at that place so that they can get the sound bites from the politicians who are present. present the young people were on a different trajectory from the uh, from the mortuary all the way to the the burial site yeah it was it was something worth mentioning something worth celebrating that young people uh and and it was a, a good coincidence that both funerals happened on the same day so that we can show
We don't need to have midterm elections for us to show that we are tired of your garbage as politicians. We are tired of your bullshit. As mainstream media, you are focused. You are channeling your infrastructure and logistics to the wrong people. You're supposed to be speaking about what the young people, who are the majority, what they want to hear. We don't want to see all these political demagogues and despots coming to uh, spew their toxic and divisive and polarizing sentiment at funerals especially. Today I saw uh, Dennis Utumbi going to talk about fertilizer, no sense of occasion. These young misguided people think that just because they've been appointed in government positions, now they can lord over us and now I'm happy. And I know the reason why they did not even dare to step foot at Brian uh, Shearer's funeral because they knew there they are going to encounter hostile crowds. They knew their people there don't have time for their bullshit. They knew people there would not listen to them. Then that's how it should be. And they are losing space. They are losing the opportunity to go and uh, uh, everywhere they are going, they are being met with booing and heckling. And that's the standard. That's how we should be treating these people. We should be sh showing them the contempt they deserve. And then now, also now uh, afterwards, the Brian Shearer effect. I'm calling it the Brian Shearer effect because we are learning a lot. And I was very disappointed to see this guy called Prince Muiti, who was who was Shira's best friend. I started seeing Shira and Muiti. Uh, suddenly, I'm seeing somebody else, and we were giving them the benefit of doubt. In fact, we were defending them from uh, or encroachment by haters and people who are already preempting and predicting that they are going to uh, embezzle money for the funeral. But then, for me to hear Prince Muti complaining, I mean, this was his friend. I mean, it takes some level of magnanimity for you, if you are the funeral organizer, to rise up to the occasion to tower above your pettiness and then you involve the people who were part of brian shira's life short life and one of them was prince muiti so if muiti is the one who is complaining he's saying that the funeral could not have cost more than three hundred thousand. now if there was 10 million that had been donated by kenyans of goodwill why would would you throw a substandard event? Why would people be complaining? You should have gone out of your way. You should have done the most because this was a once in a lifetime opportunity where you're having all these TikTokers. You should have not spared any expense. And don't say that you are giving the family or whatnot. You should have done, uh, be accountable, done what you should have done. And the same people, because I told you the problem is scarcity mentality, is when you are raised from the village and then the, you have a system which has taught you that you there will always be scarcity of everything. That's why you used to queue for food, food that you have paid for in school, but you're forced to queue by your corrupt headmasters and headmistresses. That's why you find yourself overlapping on, on roads. The road is a lot, but just, you just see a minor infraction over there, minor infringement, you are overlapping because you have a scarcity mentality. And so uh, nobody told you that the people who are who raised that 10 million have a shortage of money that if you go and ask them again to do X, Y and Z. No, but you should have gone all out, spared no expense. You should have had a committee, uh, get all his friends, put, get them involved. Why do you use funerals to do some dumb shit? To, to, it's almost like you're flexing muscles. It's also almost like a dick measuring contest. Why? Th there are many other opportunities where you can exhibit your uh, mental impotence and depravity but why do you choose funerals i've been i've been a victim of that i've been i've gone to a place where somebody i knew for a long while and then i'm seeing everyone is just uh, working for me not to get involved in the funeral and i'm thinking like why must you be so petty why must you be so stupid i'm telling you these are attributes that were imprinted on you by your religion by your educational curriculum by your mainstream media uh, uh, attributes and things that you should be departing away from which is now uh, my parting shot is uh, speak life to people you don't have to tell them oh you're going to die because you're drinking no you you are already reinforcing a construct in somebody's head eh? and you are part of the problem when you keep on saying that you're going to die you're going to die the problem with you people is ruralism your stupidity eh? you think just eh, just because somebody is drinking then that's the end of life no grow up you useless people